Good Erev Shabbos, Parshas Korach. There is a famous Mishnah in Pirkei Avos that tells us that there are two types of disputes, machlokas l'shem shamayim and a machlokas shalol l'shem shamayim. A, a machlokas, one type of dispute which is genuine, a pursuit of truth, and the other one is shalol l'shem shamayim that is not genuine, that the uh, litigants, that the antagonists uh, have all types of ulterior motives that are animating the dispute. And the Mishnah continues, what is an example of machlokas l'shem shamayim? Machlokas l'shem shamayim, a genuine dispute, that's uh, Hillel and Shammai. A machlokas l'shalol l'shem shamayim, that, and a good example of that, is Korach v'adaso. So there is a famous question which has been posed over the generations, and that is the wording of this Mishnah does not seem to be appropriately parallel. The first part of the Mishnah says, the first example of the Mishnah says that the uh, two litigants, the two antagonists are Hillel and Shammai. And those disputants are disputing L'shem Shamayim. The second example of Shalom L'shem Shamayim, uh, a dispute which is not genuine or a dispute which is not uh, a pure in pursuit of the truth, that is Korach Adaso, Korach and his cohorts. Now the first example had the two antagonists, the two disputants, Hillel and Shammai. But in the second example, Shalom L'shem Shamayim, it's not the two disputants, Korach and Moshe, or Korach and his cohorts, and Moshe and Aaron, it's just Korach and his cohorts. So this Mishnah does not seem to be written in in appropriately parallel fashion. And we assume that the editor of the Mishnah knew what he was doing when he, uh, when he compiled the language. So what is the meaning of this uh, nuance in the Mishnah and Pirkei Avos? Some suggest that uh, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, the first example of Hillel and Shammai, both are mentioned, both disputants are mentioned, because both of them were acting L'shem Shamayim. Hillel is L'shem Shamayim and Shammai is L'shem Shamayim. And therefore, this is a perfect example of Machlokas L'shem Shamayim. However, Korach and, uh, and Moshe, these are not two examples, two disputants, har shalo l'shem shamayim. It's only one half of the disputants that are, uh, that are disputing with ulterior personal gain uh, at hand. And that is Korach and his group. So Korach v'adaso, har shalo l'shem shamayim. Moshe and Aaron are not mentioned in this example because uh, their motives are pure. And they are not an example of Shalom L'shem Shamayim. However, there's another way to understand uh, the nuance of this Mishnah, which I think gives us a, uh, uh, a profound uh, life lesson. Machlokas L'shem Shamayim. What is a machlokas? Rabbi Riskin points out that the word machlokas comes from the word ches lamed kuf chalak, which can have two different meanings. One cognate of that word, it means a division, and the other means, the other is a, uh, to distinguish. So lechalek means to divide, and chiluk is a, di, is a, a to distinguish. So chiluk, to make a chiluk, a distinction. What's the difference between these two? A division, a distinction. Machlok is l'shem shamayim. Moshe and uh, uh, Hillel and Shammai, their type of dispute is a machlokas, which is about creating distinction and distinguishing truth from falsehood, to trying to figure out what is right from wrong, to try to understand what the halacha is and what, the, and, uh, and what it is not. And here, the methodology of disputing and arguing is meant to enhance our understanding and clarify the matter at hand, to distinguish right from wrong, truth from falsehood, etc. That is a machlokas l'shem shamayim. There's another meaning of the word uh, machlokas, or the cognate of that word, and that means to divide, lechalek. Korach and his group, their intention was lechalek, to cause, to, to bring about division. And therefore, a dispute that is meant to bring about division, that's a machlokas, shalom l'shem shamayim. A machlokas whose goal is to create distinction and awareness and clarification, 
That's a machlokas, which is worth having. That's a debate with it, which is worth having. In fact, Moshe tells uh, the group of, uh, of, of rebels, says, Boker v'yoda, morning will come and everything will become clear. The word boker, which means morning, is a distinguishing characteristic between night and day. When the morning arrives, then uh, the boundary between dark and light has been traversed, and night becomes morning, and night becomes day. Boker is the moment in which we clarify this distinction and distinguish between two, uh, to between two, uh, two moments in time. In fact, the word boker is similar to the word bikur, which means to criticize or to investigate, right? Bikoret is a, uh, is a critical investigation. So this is machlokes shalom l'shem shamayim and machlokes l'shem shamayim. If my purpose is to divide, that's l'chalek, that's machlokes shalom l'shem shamayim. If my purpose is to distinguish, to clarify, to understand, to see the difference between night and day, to have a critical examination, well, that's l'shem shamayim. Nothing wrong with that. But there is yet a third understanding of the word uh, machlokis, where it comes from, and a cognate of that word, and that is the word chalak, which means smooth. Smooth. What does that have to do with any type of, de- of debate or dispute? Rashi uh, uh, tells us, the rabbis explain, that Korach Adaso, Korach and his cohorts, were actually themselves disputants. They they themselves were antagonists. They were all going for the throne. They all wanted the Keser Kahuna. They all wanted uh, to be able to take the job of Moshe and Aharon and bring it back to their rightful heir. Korach, thinking it was him, and the tribe of Reuven, who were the original um, servants of uh, of the holy tasks in the Mishkan, their service was ult- their status was ultimately transferred to Shevet Levi, and now they wanted it back. So Korach had his goal, the group of disputants from uh, Shevet Reuven had their goal, and they were at loggerheads with one another. And how, however, they smoothed over their differences here in order to take down Moshe. That's another kind of machlokas from the word chalak where individuals who themselves are at loggerheads with one another figure out how to paper over their differences in order to create a worse or another type of division within the Klal Yisrael. So what's bad about papering over differences? What's bad about smoothing it over? That should be a good thing. But that's what the mission is telling us. That's a machlokas shalo l'shem shamayim. A machlokas when we chalak, when we smooth over, over our differences, not to create shalom, not to create peace, not for the purposes of trying to figure out how to live together, how to march forward together, how to find truth together, when the purpose of smoothing over our differences is simply to take down somebody else. That's a machlokas shalo l'shem shamayim. That is a terrible, terrible dispute. That is a terrible, uh, uh, that is a, a terrible partnership. It looks like it's shalom. It looks like it's peace. What can be bad? We've smoothed over our differences. The enemy of my enemy is my enemy. And that thinking should be our enemy. Because the enemy of my enemy is my enemy is, uh, sorry, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, is, in fact, uh, only good if uh, that brings us to a point of trying to create peace. But if the enemy of my enemy is my friend simply in order to wreak havoc upon society, then the enemy of my enemy is still my enemy. Machlokas shalom l'shem shamayim is really not about machlokas. It's about sh- the shalom that it purports to be representing. We smooth over our differences, kumbaya, we're all happy with one another. But the purpose of smoothing over those differences is simply to create more havoc, more trouble, more debate, more division. That is the enemy, the enemy of us all. 
May HaKadosh Baruch Hu give us the wisdom and the courage to be able to distinguish between Machlokas Shalol L'Shem Shamayim and Machlokas L'Shem Shamayim. And we should use all of our powers and all of our faculties to smooth over differences between one another, not, God forbid, to create havoc and division within our people, but to create shalom for our people and for all of humanity. Good Shabbos.